Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Shah Weekly. We are going to continue to work on our CloudKit application for to-do list. If you have not watched the last part, in the last part, part number one, we learn how to set up CloudKit, we learn how to insert data as well as display data, as you can see over here. Now, today we'll be learning about how can we filter these tasks, all right? So let's go ahead and create some sort of a filter. Now, obviously we don't really have checkboxes over here. So that's a different story. We're gonna perform that a little bit later in probably the next part, but we can always go to the CloudKit console and change the flag from it's completed true and false. So we can do that, right? It's on a development environment, so we should be able to do that and then we can filter it out. But the first thing we need for a filter is some sort of a segmented control that will allow us to view all the tasks, completed task or incompleted task. All right, so what I'm gonna do is go and jump into to-do list screen. This is my view. And right inside the view, well, not inside the view, but inside the same file, I guess, I'm gonna go ahead and create filter options. So filter options. This will be string case iterable, which basically means that you can iterate them and identifiable. You will have cases like all, completed, and incomplete. Okay, great. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create an extension on the filter options filter options and going to expose a display name property. And why am I doing that? Well, if I simply use the raw value of all completed and incomplete, then I will get all completed and complete all in lower case. So instead of doing that, which may not look good on the display, I'm just gonna take their raw value and capitalize it. Also, I will need to implement the ID since I am conforming to identifiable. And for now, I'm just gonna return raw value. That will be different, so that should be okay. Now the next option or the next thing I want to do is somehow to display a segmented control right underneath our text box. So I want to display a segmented control right there with different segments, kind of like this, right? The first can be all, complete, incomplete, whatever. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing I'm gonna do inside the to-do list screen is creating the filter option. That will be the selected filter option. So if I select incomplete, the filter option will become incomplete. And now I can somehow, somewhere, create the segmented control segmented control right here. And I can say picker with a particular title, which we can say select. Selection, this will be a binding. This is gonna go into the filter option and some sort of a content. So for that, I can simply go ahead and say for each filter options. So this is going to allow us to uh, iterate. I can simply go through the, all the cases. We will get the option. And we can say option dot display name dot tag. So tag is the actual value that will be selected. So make sure that the value that you're selecting or the value that you're passing in the tag is going to be same as the selection because the tag value is the actual value. And since we want this picker style to be segmented, we're gonna go ahead and pass in segmented. So now you can see in our view on the right hand side, you can see the segmented control and all is being selected because we selected all when we started out. This is great. So now we have some sort of a model over here that will allow you to select a picker. Based on the selection of the picker, whenever you select something from the picker, whether that option is all or complete or incomplete, this property, filter option, is going to get populated. What we can do is 
we can go and create another property right inside the view. We can say filter task. Now, why are we putting it inside the view and not somewhere else? Well, because right now we only have one view, which is the to-do list screen, which is responsible for displaying all this stuff. If we need to capture filter tasks and maybe do something with it, then I would create it or move it into a model. But currently, it's, uh, it doesn't really matter. Right now, we can't really return anything from filter task. So we can just say model.task because we haven't really figured out how to perform the filter. The actual filtration will be inside the model. So let's go ahead and jump into the model. This is the only model, aggregate model, facade, that is available in our application because our application is kind of very small. We don't really need to create multiple aggregate models. So this model is the aggregate model. The task item is the actual model which is going to be providing data to the view. Next, we can go ahead and say filter task. So I'm just creating a function by filter option. So you have to pass in the filter option, which will be filter options. And it is going to be returning us the task items array. And based on the filter option, if it's all, then, well, we can just return the task. Nothing is being, we don't really have to do anything. If it is completed, then we can say, uh, well, return the one which are tasks.filter and only return the one that are actually completed. So it's completed. And if it is incomplete, then tasks.filter and only return the one which are not completed. So we'll just put a not over here. There we go. And that's it. That's pretty simple. Let's go back to our to-do list screen. And now we can actually use this in our filter task. So filter task, we are going to select, we're going to say, if the filter task is all, actually, we may not even need that. Let's go ahead and say, just directly call the function. We can simply say filter task by, and we can simply pass in the filter option, I guess, filter option. There we go. We don't even need return because that's the only line that will be returned, okay? Now we have to use it. So right now you can see over here, we are using model.task. So how about if we use filter task over here? Will it make any difference? And let's go ahead and run this. Now currently you can already see that we don't have the ability to perform the filter. Actually, completed task is working uh, because none of them is mark completed. So incomplete and all completed is actually working. You can see that. Incomplete is showing the same thing, completed, okay. So all is showing all of them, completed is showing nothing because none of the task is marked with is completed true. Incomplete is showing also all of them. So what we can do is go log in to our CloudKit dashboard and mark some of the tasks to be completed. So let's go ahead and jump into our CloudKit console. And we already have the hello to do selected, that's fine. Let's go ahead and check out the records. Record type is task item. Okay, doesn't really show anything. Oh, public database, we have to select private. Okay, so there are a couple of items you can see over here. Let's say that mow the lawn is completed. So if I go over there, probably I can simply change this value to one. Let's go ahead and save it. And let's also select feed the cat. And we will select this to be one. So two items, two tasks, I'm marking them completed. Let's go ahead and now go back to our app and run it again. Okay. Completed, there we go. Two tasks that I mark feed the cat more along are now completed, incomplete are two, and all of them are all. Pretty simple to do, right? Now, obviously, this is not the complete app. We still have to delete the task. We still have to mark, check mark it so that it can mark as completed, like a checkbox. 
Uh, so we still have to do a bunch of stuff. And that is something that we'll be covering in the future videos. So again, thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for more. Hey, if you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. You can see I have a lot of courses for CIF UI as well as my brand new course, which just got released, which is on UI kit development. A lot of you ask about UI kit, so I just created a brand new course and published it. Definitely check that out. I have also a, another great course on CIF UI with MV design pattern. This is the Apple's recommended way or the Apple's way of building the app. So definitely check that one out also. We have Core Data and iOS. All of these courses are amazing. You will find the link to all of these courses right there in the YouTube description. Thank you so much.